Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to parse an XML document using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Firebit board from DFRobot. So in order to be able to parse an XML document we are going to use this library, TinyXML2, uh, that offers to us uh, a lot of functionalities that allow us to uh, parse an XML document, uh, find the values of uh, its elements and attributes, and a lot of other stuff. So for this simple tutorial we are going to start by parsing a very very simple XML document and basically uh, get the value of uh, one of its elements. Nonetheless before we can get started let me just give a note on how to install this library as an Arduino uh, library because this is a generic C++ library, TinyXML2 uh, but basically installing it as an Arduino library is very simple. You just need to go here to the GitHub page of the library and then you'll have these two files, tinyxml2.c++ and which corresponds to the implementation file and tinyxml2.h. You simply need to uh, download these two files. You can, for example, download the, the whole project here, download it as a zip and then basically you'll get a copy of this and extract these two files, or you can enter them, for example, as you can see here. Uh, you can enter them uh, and then you can see it as raw. Okay, let me just and save them. Okay, you can actually do this as well and save them with their original file types. Okay, this is, uh, these are the two, uh, two of the options that you can do, for example, to very quickly download these two uh, files and having them available on your machine. So as soon as you download them, you need to locate your uh, Arduino libraries folder. In my case, for example, uh, it is located under C, users, my username, documents, Arduino, and then libraries. Okay, this is the path uh, in my case. And then in sign, as you can see here, uh, you have probably have a bunch of libraries from your uh, from your environment. Uh, in your in my case, as you can see here, I've simply created a folder called tinyxml2. So you need to create a folder. Uh, you should name it. So use a suitable name. In this case, tinyxml2 uh, is what makes sense, giving the name of the library. And then you simply need to paste here both of the files: the tinyxml2. Uh, .c++ file and the tinyxml2.h file and then after this you should be able to use it uh, like any other regular Arduino library. Nonetheless, take in consideration that uh, this is a, a pure C++ library, uh, so in some cases when you are trying uh, with more advanced use cases that the library has to offer, maybe the syntax is a little bit different uh, from the regular Arduino libraries that uh, typically are a little bit simpler to, uh, to interact with. Nonetheless, as we will see um, in the code that we are going to analyze in a minute, it's really, really simple to, to use it. So. Um, there, there should be no issue in using a pure C++ library. Okay, so uh, looking into the actual code, uh, the first thing we need to do is including the tinyxml2.h uh, file, so we include the library that we have just installed, so we can have access to all the functionality we need uh, in order to parse uh, XML document. Then we are going for convenience to declare here the using of the tinyxml2 namespace, so uh, it's just a convenience so every time we use a function or, or an object or a class from this library we don't need to use the scope resolution operator uh, and it makes our syntax a little bit shorter. Then we are going to define here uh, a string as you can see here which will be our test document and it contains a very simple um, XML document as you can see it has a root element that we have called root just for uh, illustration purposes. Then it has an nested element, which we called also uh, element for um, for simplicity. And then inside this element has a value seven. Uh, so our main objective here with this tutorial is basically to parse this document and then to extract this value seven, which is a value here of this element. So after we have defined our uh, our document as a string, uh, we are going to move on to the setup function and as usual we are going to open the, a serial connection so we can print the results of our program and then we are going to declare an object of this class, XML document, uh, which is basically the, the base class that we are going to use, the base object that we are going to use to parse our document. 
So, once we have this object here, the next thing to do is calling here this parse method on this object and pass as input of this method um, the string that contains our XML document. In our case, it's this test, test document variable. So, this procedure will take care of parsing um, the document. Naturally, if it's not possible, it will return um, a suitable error code indicating that. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description um, of this video for this, this method, for the documentation of this method. Uh, but for this tutorial, let's assume that we are just going to do a very simple error checking. So in case of success, um, this method returns XML underscore success. This is a constant, okay? So in case it is different from uh, this value, so in case it is different from success, we are simply going to print a message saying error uh, parsing the document, and naturally we are going to return because there's no point in continuing uh, trying to access the values of the document if it was not parsed. Naturally, for a more robust um, implementation in a real scenario application, you could, for example, check uh, every error type, if it made sense for your application, it all depends on what we are trying to do. But don't forget that in uh, real application code, your error handling should be as uh, as resilient as possible and should be uh, complete and adequate to the procedure that we are going to do. So moving on, the next thing we need to do uh, is obtaining this root element here, so we can start navigating through uh, our parsed XML document. So in order for us to get um, the root of the document, we need to call here this first shell method on our parsed XML document. And as output, we are going to receive uh, a pointer to an XML node element. Okay, we are going to call it root uh, because basically it will contain uh, the root of our uh, document. So after we have the root of our document, uh, and assuming everything went fine, so from this point onward, we are not doing any more um, error checking, but naturally you should check here if this is different from null to make sure that we were able to obtain uh, our, our root element. Uh, so moving on, and since what we want to obtain is this value here from the nested element, okay, the nested element in our XML document, so we need to call this first child element uh, method on our root uh, object, passing as input a string with the name of the element we want to obtain. In our case, as you can see here, it is actually called element. Uh, so basically, we pass this string here. If this was called, I don't know, something else here, this string would receive the name of that uh, of that tag. And as output of this method call, uh, basically we are going to receive a pointer to an XML document, an object of, uh, of class uh, XML document that then we can use finally to obtain um, the value contained in that element. Don't forget just one small detail since we are working with pointers, don't forget to use this operator here in order for, uh, for you to be able to call the method. So moving on to the final part where we are going to try to obtain the value of our element. The first thing we need to do is declaring an integer val uh, variable since uh, our element uh, contains an integer value. So it's expected that at the end we are going to receive an integer. And then in order for us to be able to receive its value, we simply need to call this query in text uh, method on our XML uh, element. And basically, as input, we need to pass the address of our integer in order for this uh, method to uh, extract that value and set that value um, to our variable. Naturally, this can go wrong, so there's there's the possibility of doing some error checking here. Again, for simplicity, I'm, I'm keeping things simple here, uh, but basically I'm going to leave the link in the description with more details uh, about this method, this query in text, and then it is uh, clearly stated how you should do in order for, uh, for making sure that you did not receive any error. But, Again, for keeping things simple, let's assume that everything goes right. And then uh, at the end, we want to print the, the value obtained. And basically, we are just going to directly print it to the serial uh, port, assuming that everything went fine. So to finalize, uh, I've already uploaded the code to my SP32. Let me just open here the serial monitor. And as you can see here, uh, we have obtained the value 7, pretty much like, uh, like what uh, like, uh, was expected. And basically, let me just try to reset the device. And as you can see here, 
uh, to see it start from the beginning, we have obtained the value 7 as expected, uh, which means that we were able to correctly parse uh, this document and then we, we were able to navigate through um, its elements and to obtain the value of the element called element for simplicity, uh, which is the value 7. Again, don't forget that when parsing uh, this type of documents, some stuff can go wrong. The document could be wrongly formatted. We can be looking for an element that doesn't exist. So don't forget to check the documentation in the description, uh, which declares there, which has there uh, the list of errors that can occur when we are calling and the methods used here. So for a final application, make sure to have a robust uh, implementation and to account for these errors. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Hope you have enjoyed.